the marketing department here at Art Storefronts. I've been doing that for a little bit over six years now. Uh, I bring that up to say that's six years spent trying to figure out how to solve the problem that you guys all have on this call, which is how do you grow a successful art or photography business with marketing uh, in today's climate. And in addition to that, I've been running three of these sessions essentially a week for going on a little bit over a year, I think since March last year. And if you do that for any period of time, you end up talking to so many different artists and photographers uh, that pattern recognition becomes a real thing. I've heard it all, seen it all, um, you know, likely some of the problems, some of the, the frustrations that you're running to in your business. And then as a final, I think we have a little bit over 5,800 customers now at Art Storefronts. And you have 5,800 customers and you study their data very closely, which we do. I know who's selling the most originals. I know who's selling the highest priced originals. I know who's selling the most commissions. I know who's selling the most metal prints, the most acrylic prints, uh, the highest point, the lowest point, uh, who commands the highest prices for limited editions, who's selling the most classes, uh, who's got the biggest business period, uh, what are they doing about their marketing, right? Like, what does their subject material look like? Um, what are they doing that's different than everyone else? And I think you put all of that together and it gives us a pretty unique knowledge base uh, that actually truly understands what the heck it is out there in today's day and age that is making artists and photographers successful. And I think that's a, that's a very, very important data set. And I'd bring that up to say, regardless uh, of any of you ever becoming customers at Art Storefronts, I want this call to be valuable. I want you to feel like you can ask questions about where you are in your business, whether you're just getting started, you've never sold anything before at all. Uh, it's been a hobby up till now, you're trying to make it a business. Uh, you had a robust business going on pre-pandemic and your revenue sources uh, uh, disappeared. You're trying to navigate a, uh, a difficult gallery relationship or you rely on the, the show and their circuit and that's not really panning out or You've got questions about niche selection or pricing or branding or legal or taxes or anything about what we do. So the Q&A portion of this entire session ends up becoming uh, the most valuable. So in terms of an agenda, what I'll do is I'm going to start off uh, with a little rant that I like to do um, and that I'll get into in just a second. After that's done, uh, we will open it up to Q&A. And there's a couple of different ways you can ask questions as the show sort of rolls along. Um, one, there's like a, there's a chat at the bottom. We see that we can pull that in. So if you've got questions, you want to throw them in there. Uh, members of my team will answer as I'm going along. Uh, anything that I mentioned today, links, blog posts, uh, PDFs, reports, videos, uh, we'll throw links in the chat. But in addition to that, after the session ends, I'll end up sending you guys an email. It'll have a replay of the session and it'll have all the various different links uh, that we mentioned as this thing rolls along and, and, and then there's always some good stuff. So, you know, don't feel like you, if you want to just listen and you don't want to click on things, you can certainly do that. Excuse me. Um, and if, well, yeah, that's it. I'll send you all the links. So, okay. I mentioned I've been running three of these a week and I've been doing that since before the pandemic and you know, art store friends, what do we do? What, you know, what about the software? What about the marketing, printing? All those various different questions are all well and good, but I like to start ahead of that, uh, uh, one w w little bit further upstream if you like, uh, because I believe very firmly that there's a certain way to approach your guys' business if you want a business that will actually uh, potentially support you uh, and take care of you financially. Uh, there's a whole lot that people get wrong. And, you know, I know conclusively that Every single solitary person on this Zoom call has an attention problem. They have a marketing problem. They don't have enough eyeballs on their art and their photography. And without them, uh, they're never gonna have a successful art business. So I came up with this thing a while back um, called, and I'm gonna move myself over here, called the Art Business Pyramid. And it's, and it's a way that I, that I like to use to sort of explain um, how you need to be set up if you wanna succeed, okay? And I stole it from Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but it's a pyramid. And the idea is, is you have to sort the blocks on the bottom before you can get to the blocks on the top, right? And so what, is the, what are the blocks on the bottom? In Maslow's case, first we have to sort our physiological needs. That means everyone needs to eat, everyone needs to sleep, excuse me, and you need to do that on a daily basis. Once that's taken care of and provided for, then you can start working on safety in a house and getting fit and money, and then you can find a partner and esteem, self-actualization, become a wonderful human being, fantastic. So I give you the art selling pyramid, and I believe that this is no joke the path to a successful business, uh, a successful art or photography business in 2021 and beyond. 
the bottom block, okay? In Maslow's case, it was something that we needed to do every single solitary day, eat and sleep. It's no different in the art selling pyramid and the bottom block is attention. It is what all of you need more of, okay? Every single solitary person on this call needs more eyeballs to their art, to their photography. I know this conclusively because I've got 5,500 customers and it doesn't matter if they're knocking on the million dollar a year in sales, if they've sold nothing or if they're anywhere in between. Every one of them wants to continue growing that business. To do that, you need more attention, okay? Attention comes in two forms. It comes in rented and owned. The rented can't be taken away from the owned. I'm sorry, can't be taken away from you. So, email addresses, phone numbers, uh, uh, snail mail addresses. Right? You retain that information. It cannot be taken away from you. The rented varietal are what's on the socials: our Facebook followers, our Instagram followers, our Pinterest followers, our YouTube followers. Anything that you have in a digital capacity where you don't control the rules. Collectively, attention. Okay, and having 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 a, a robust amount of it is the currency of the land right now, straight up. It's the currency of the land that we live in. With the attention, you can do anything. Without it, you're not in the game. Stated another way, the best art, the best photography does not win. Your business is not a meritocracy of talent. I wish that it was. It is a meritocracy first on marketing. It's a meritocracy first on marketing. If you are not doing the marketing and you are not getting the eyeballs, you are not winning, period. It can't even be a meritocracy on your talent until you sort the, the marketing problem, which is why this is the bottom block, attention. I always say this on these shows. If I asked you a question, who are some of the most powerful women in the world? Who immediately comes to mind? You know who it is? It's the Kardashians. You wanna know why? They've solved the attention problem. I mean, you can, we can all morally question about how those women amassed this level of attention. Uh, but what you can't question is the fact that none of them have flown commercial in quite some time. What you can't uh, uh, contradict is the fact that they all have tens of millions or $100 million businesses. Or stated another way, any of these well-endowed, surgically altered women could decide to start painting tomorrow or start taking photos tomorrow with an iPhone and they would have a $10 million a year art business in year one because the currency of the land is attention. With it, you can do anything. Without it, you're not in the game. And so just like Maslow's needs, eating and sleeping every single solitary day, you guys need to be working on getting more attention every single solitary day. That means marketing. Yes, I know you all suck at it because all artists and photographers suck at it. Yes, I know you don't do it consistently because almost no artists and photographers do it consistently. So that is, that is, that is a key, key thing to understand. Once we take care of the attention block, we can move up to the next block. The next block has two parts. It's got an outer shell, and then it's got what's inside of it. Let's talk, number one, about the business model, okay? And this one is so critically important, I can't even begin to tell you. If you want to have a successful art or photography business where you control the rules that cannot be taken away from you, you need to understand the business model. It is quite simply selling direct. You have to sell direct to the end consumer for the very reason that you retain the information on that consumer that you can market to them in the future, okay? Number one, and number two, it allows you to build a collector list. I took that concept from Wyland's book, Don't Be a Starving Artist, fantastic book, skinny, I think you should buy it, who is Wyland, the whale guy, number one best-selling author in the United, author, artist in the United States. Apparently it's not even close. Uh, he might even be in the world. So what does he say a collector list is? A collector list is a list of people that will buy in upwards of eight pieces of artwork from him over the course of his life. He continues to market. He continues to get better at his craft. He treats these people like VIPs, and they continue buying art from him again and again and again. Earlier in this pitch, I alluded to um, you know, the fact that I've been doing this for a while now. And so you do it for a while now. You work with enough artists, enough photographers. You start to see the power of the collector list. Like... I have an analogy of explaining it, a way of explaining it that I really actually kind of like. You guys are all just commission salespeople. That's what you are at the end of the day. You work on commission. If you sell your work and you sell a bunch of work, you make money. If you don't, you don't, right? You don't. You don't have a good year. You didn't do any marketing. You didn't sell anything. You don't make any money. It's a hobby at that point. It's not a business. Your collector list, the cultivation of this list, takes you from being a commission salesperson to a person with a base salary. Instead of someone that only eats when they sell, you are someone that gets paid just for getting out of bed and creating in the morning. You know, you now have a $60,000, $80,000 a year base salary because you understand how important a collector list is. 
Let's keep the math simple. You come out with a new collection, a, a new series. Um, it's 10 pieces. And you're going to announce the series on Wednesday. On Monday, you email your collectors who get to see it before anyone else, uh, who gets to bid on it before anyone else. You sell some percentage of the 10 pieces to your collectors before the public even gets to see it, okay? This starts out small. Maybe it's just one piece out of the 10, 10%. In some cases, it grows up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And if you're really, really good, you will sell the entire show out before the public even gets a shot at it. That is the goal. That is the eventual goal. That is the power of the collector list. That is why you must understand the business model. And let me tell you, do you know how many people I talk to week in, week out that are in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, their 70s, their 80s, and occasionally even in their 90s, and they didn't understand the business model, and they didn't understand the collector list, and maybe they sold through galleries and didn't retain their customer information, or maybe they did the shows and fairs, but they didn't keep their customer information, and they certainly didn't market to them. What do they have now? Nothing. They have nothing. They have a bunch of relationships that used to pay them money, and now those relationships are not working, and they have to start building a collector list like everyone else. And it's a terrifying thing to see. If you understand the business model and you're building a collector list, you are putting yourself on a path to actually grow your business year over year, and you're putting yourself on a path to having a business that can support you. You're getting that base salary up and up and up and up. And you know when you see this work, it is just so powerful. It is so powerful. I mean, these are your patrons that go along uh, 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 for, a, for a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 year journey with you, the rest of your art or photography creating life. And I would go as far to say, it is the number one metric indicative of success of an artist or photographer. Is a collector list, okay, that they are treating like VIPs and constantly building and taking care of. It makes that big of a difference. It separates uh, the, the, the artists, the photographers that sell great from the ones that don't. Um, more so than more so than the work itself. So critically important to understand those two. Once we understand we're, we're working on attention day by day, we understand the business model, uh, we're engaging it, we're building and cultivating a collector list, treating them like VIPs, then we get into the three ways to sell art. Um, there's only three ways. Number one, the best way, in person, face to face. Everyone knows this, it's a trick question, of course it's the best way to sell art. They gotta, they gotta meet the artist, they get to know, like, and trust you. You form a relationship. They get bonded to you. It's the best way to see art, to touch it. Fantastic. Problem, you, me, all of us are geographically fixed on this planet. There's sleep that has to happen every night, and you can't have 15 conversations at once. So yes, you need to have a website. But guess what? It's the worst way. It's the worst way of the three, the website, okay? Yes, you need to have one. Yes, it's critically important. Yes, it solves for those occasions that I just mentioned when they're not in your hometown, when you're asleep, uh, when you need to talk to show 15 people at once. But it's the worst way. It's still important. Number three, the newest way, okay? The way that the entire art and photography selling world is trying to figure out, and not just us, just about every single solitary person in e-commerce that's serious. And what is it? It's via live video. In either a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many. Let me talk about a one-to-one. -one. I come to Flora's website. I say, Flora, your work is very interesting. I would love to jump on a Zoom call, and I would like to talk to you about your work. And Flora says, no problem, Patrick. She sends me the Zoom link. I jump onto the, the call with her. She's holding the pieces up, talking to me about them, talking about her inspiration, getting the sale over the line. That is the one-to-one -one fashion. The one-to-many fashion is the notion of a live art show, okay? And these can happen in a whole bunch of different ways. And the entire art selling world is trying to figure this out in concert. So let me give you some examples. And again, I'm gonna send you links. You can watch these things after the fact. I'm not An artist in his garage studio, holding up his works, streaming live to the socials, in this case, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and going through the work, talking about the work, answering questions from the crowd live. And this particular gentleman, over a period of 15 days, sold, I think, 61 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian. And he didn't even have to leave his house. And he didn't have to pay anyone a 50% commission. And he got to have his dog in there with him. And he's just showing the pieces himself 
doing the selling, uh, not having to leave this house, absolutely staggering. So we got, the, we got the results with this particular customer. We were like, wow, this is amazing. Let's go see if we can duplicate it. Always been one of my favorites, so. This is another artist of ours. Uh, her name is Meg Naffenberger, Kansas City. And she was literally moving studios. I'm getting myself out of the way so you can see this. She was moving studios out of one studio space to another. And she had a bunch of these color studies and you know extra little in-between pieces lying around, not expensive stuff. So she decided to have the show. Uh, the show had 82 pieces um, after, uh, oh, so the show was going to run on Wednesday. On Monday, she sent the show to her collector list. Remember what I said about a collector list? The collectors bought 46% of the show before the show even ran. Uh, I think she sold 70-something pieces on this one for a little bit over $12,000. They were, they were low price points and just remarkable results, right? Some of the pieces were a little bit bigger. So, okay, art store fronts, what do you do? We figure out the latest, greatest way to sell art. Uh, we find find something that really works, and then we immediately attempt to duplicate it. And after you, after you duplicate it once, you do it again and again and again and again, and you get better, and you learn the, the trade craft, the nuances. What's the best way to stream it? What's the best time to do it? What do you have to worry about in the house? Uh, what about prices? Do you quote the prices? Uh, what's the best way to take payment? Uh, how do you handle shipping? How do you talk about the works? What about lighting? Um, all of these various different techniques and trade craft, and then run it again, and then run it with the photographer and a different subject matter and a different subject material and a different niche, a different industry. Not only, not only is this the future of selling art, not only is this the most interesting thing to happen in the art world in forever, but the, the, the various different iterations in which this is possible is so staggering. I can't, e I can't even begin to tell you like, okay, great. So, you, you know, you've seen all of those examples. Well, what about if you actually have a gallery show, right? Okay, so Matthew, same customer, had a gallery show in the middle of the pandemic. People had to wear masks. It was, it was uh, uh, you know, attendance wasn't necessarily what it could have been because the, the, the pandemic was on. So guess what? The show ended the next day. He's got his glass of wine. He's got some tank top without sleeves. He needs to get some sleeves. I always like making fun of him for not having any sleeves. But he's walking the show now. And just like you're there in the gallery, he's walking through the various different pieces. He's talking about the various different pieces. Uh, we're bringing the social comments in live. And, you know, I, 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 I don't say, okay, that this is the future of art in, in, in a hyperbolic fashion in, 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 at all, okay? Not only is it the future of selling art, the entire e-commerce world is trying to figure this out right now. So what you're gonna notice when you start going to Amazon is underneath the Amazon listing, there's a live video where somebody's talking about the product or he's talking about other products, you're gonna start seeing it. Facebook right now is beta testing this with all the various different makeup people that sell makeup, <laughs> live streams where people can buy things directly. And you know, yours, yours is an industry that doesn't have a lot of reports, okay? It just doesn't. But this one is pretty awesome. It's from Art Basel and it's from UBS. Okay, I'm gonna send you the links to this. A short disclaimer on this one is they only really survey for these reports the top 5% of the art market, okay? So it's, it's, it's the biggest selling artists in the world, right? The ones that are in Sotheby's and the ones that are in Christie's and the ones that are in Branded Dealers and Larry Gagosian's Gallery and on and on and on. Doesn't mean the data is not relative. So I got this big report, it's really cool. It's a massive PDF. Great table of contents has been saying global art market in 2020, dealer sales, auction sales, art fairs, online sales, a global wealth and collector perspectives, economic impact and conclusions. And they used to have this like really cool online portion of it. I'm trying to find this quote. When asked about the future of online sales, the verdict results unanimous. No. Where did it go? Let's see if I can find this. Anyway, you're going to have to read the report on your own. It, it used to have this like really cool website piece that I would cite. But now look at this page not found. Lame, lame. Look at your website. Anyway, what they say in this particular report is a tremendous amount of HNWs, high net worth individuals, bought art in 2020 via what they call OVRs, online viewing rooms. You know what an OVR is? It is a fancy way of saying a Zoom call, exactly what we are doing right now exactly what you can potentially be doing on a one-to-one -one basis with your prospective customers. It is absolutely the future of selling art. So mega, mega interesting. We believe that we are at 
the forefront in understanding how this works, uh, at the forefront of understanding how it works specifically for art and photography, what software to use, how, get, how to get the best results. And it is quite literally the development that we're probably more interested in uh, than just about anything else. So mega fascinating thing, mega fascinating thing. We can get more into it in, in the Q&A. Uh, but let me finish the pyramid. So as a final on the pyramid, um, those are the three ways to sell art. The top block is everything else, okay? The top block is you have a gallery, a retail gallery in your town that's paying you money. We love retail galleries. We love revenue sources, okay? If you've got a revenue source that's working, fantastic. But guess what? It's in addition to working on getting attention every day. It's in addition to the three ways of selling art. It's in addition to taking care of your collector list. So too, whether it's the show and fair circuit, so too, if you're in an online gallery, Etsy, Redbubble, Sachi, any of those. Um, anything else that you go and goes on top of this pyramid and you work the pyramid and you work the pyramid consistently over a period of years and you are on the path to actually having a sustainable, successful business. If you don't, you're going into a fight with one arm tied behind your back. And again, it, brought, it busts me up, it breaks my heart because I believe the art world, the art and photography world is having its blockbuster Netflix moment. It's having its taxi cab Uber moment, okay? The entire industry is getting disrupted. The old way of doing things is getting obliterated. It was exploitative. And to the artist and the photographer that understands the rules, understands the pyramid, there's no one standing in their way from them building a successful business. It's only understanding the correct strategy, having the correct tools, and then how long you stay at it. That's it. And that's the other beautiful thing about you guys. Being that I talk to so many week in, week out, in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, in their 80s, not kidding, couple days, couple times a month, I get somebody in their 90s. You have the rest of your life to get going on this. You guys don't have midlife crises, right? You don't decide at 40 you're gonna become a tax accountant because you're bored with what you're doing with life. You guys are artists and photographers for life. So assuming you understand this, okay? Assuming you get on the path, you, you're in a fantastic place to build a great uh, uh, and rewarding, successful, sustainable business. And it all just comes down to having the plan, having the tools, and working it. So that's my rant. I think more important than, than, than anything that we do at Art Storefront, so we can certainly get into that and talk about that in detail, but is understanding this pyramid and understanding how much time you have and understanding uh, uh, that if you work at it consistently, that's who's gonna grow a successful art business. And that's literally it. I mean, that's all you need to be doing. And many aren't, right? And many had a wonderful career. And you know they were selling in galleries or they had these revenue sources that worked. And then all of a sudden COVID came along and all of them were wiped right off the board. And what were you supposed to do? Just sit on the sidelines and wait? Hope those things come back? Uh, uh, do, you, do you think that something like COVID is not gonna be around the corner again, God forbid, in five, seven years, whatever it is, who knows? So it underscores how important that pyramid is. It's, it's critical. And if nothing else, whether you ever become a customer or not, understand that pyramid is, is the difference between having a successful business and not in most cases. You know, if you understand how the game is played, if you understand how it works, if you understand your control, you're in control of everything, and then if you do the marketing consistently, you're on your way. You're on your way. It's a meritocracy in your marketing. It's not a meritocracy to start out with in your art. So that's my rant. Um, at this point, open it up to Q&A, a couple different ways to do that. If you're one of the brave ones that has your camera on, thank you for that, by the way, you can raise your hand, old school fashion, and say, hey, I've got a question, and I'll see it. Um, so I think, Patty, you raised your hand, so I've got it. Flora, if you raise your hand, we'll get you too. Um, okay, so if that's how you do it in real life, um, in, in the bottom of the Zoom window, there's a reactions tab. You can hit the reactions tab, and there's a thing on there that says raise hand. That will digitally allow you to raise your hand and then it makes things a little bit easier for us because it gives us a cue and I can just kind of work down it. And that's happening. If you don't want to turn your camera on, you do not have to turn your camera on. I hate being on video. I totally understand you not wanting to be on video. So that's an option. Um, if you want to just throw your question in the chat or you've already thrown your question in the chat, um, then we can do that as well. Um, and then we'll just kind of work down the questions. And then also, you know, um, I see all your questions on YouTube and on Twitter and on Facebook. So if you're leaving those there, what's up, Carlos? What's up, Les? Um, then, then I can answer those too, and we can bring those in as we roll along. But yeah, that's um, that's the ball game. That's the ball of wax. And Juan, yeah, I don't know what happened with my mic. Something's something's a little tweaky. I have this like microphone set up, and I have this like little box with like 
you know, 10 different levels on it. And my kids have discovered it. And it's not good. It's not good. They're tuning in Tokyo over here. Um, all right. Oh, so there's, there's a question to start. How many pieces uh, do people need to have to start? One. One, Natasha. Not kidding. One. And the reason I answer that is because what I see time and time again, and I'm kind of going to stand-up mode on my desk, so bear with me here. What I see time and time again, Natasha, is I will just get started when I have X number of pieces, right? And the hours turn into days, turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years. You've not launched that business yet. You're not doing anything. You're not getting started on your marketing, and hence it's not going anywhere. So one piece is enough to get started. That's all you need. And then each new piece that you release becomes a marketing moment and on and on and on. So I would say get started right away. Don't wait. That's, that's, that's normally what we recommend in these cases. Um, you have major staves, right? How do you get through that? Alcohol helps, Patty. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. It does. It does. But we can't be, I can't be advocating for that. Um, you know, you, you, I mean, your camera's on already, Patty. I'm going to unmute you. You know how you get over it? You start. You start. So you'll need to hit, hit, hit the mute in the bottom left-hand corner. It's like the mic icon, Patty. On your Zoom window, it'll be like a little mic. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, you, you just start. You just start. And you realize, like, the beautiful world um, that we live in right now is, you know, how many television shows do you watch or news stations or anything else because of COVID where it's like the anchor with a crappy – wired AirPod, inter, you know, headphones and messed up hair and their, and their dirty background, you know, because their house is a mess too. And they're on television. Like it doesn't matter anymore. You don't need fancy lights or a fancy microphone. Your hair doesn't need to be perfectly coiffed. Uh, uh, we all don't have makeup on all the time. Right. And, and you just get on with it and you just get on with it. It's, it, does it hair. yeah, it's exactly. It's, it's, it's the future and you just have to be contrarian about it. And if it is the future, it's like, okay, we got to just, we got to just work to execute on it. But you turned your camera on. So you're already brave. Ah, uh, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it helps to, it helps to, to, you know, be going through it with a cohort that feels the same way that you do and that, you know, has the same kind of stage fright and you all kind of psych each other up and one person does it and they do such a terrible job at it and they laugh at themselves and the dog knocks something over and they you know they had they had internet issues and everything else and you're just like you know what it doesn't matter i'm gonna be doing thousands of these things because it's the future so you just you, you get on with it and you persevere how it ends up going yep. yep no problem i'll get i'll get you next bill that's weird why is that zoom window i gotta fix something here hold on just bear with me hmm why is that not doing what I want it to do? Show selfie there? No. Sorry, I had to upgrade Zoom today and some weird things going on. All right, Bill, you're up next. Go ahead. Why would that not be showing? Gotcha. Hey, that's a good question. Hey, Bradford. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just a quick question for you. I think you're right on. I'm really excited about it, but it really comes down to also the reality of what, from a financial perspective, always. my investment needs to be. Yep, always. And uh, I definitely want to get into more details whether this is the appropriate time or not. Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. Can, next year. So just a general, yeah, yeah, specific to photography. Yep, yep, I can tell you. Okay. So okay. Um, the 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 interesting um, the interesting thing, guy. This really sucks because normally it pulls your face in, and I just cannot see it, and that's totally lame. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. So everyone on the call usually thinks that they have a website problem. This is the easiest way for me to explain what we do, and then eventually get to how much it costs. And nothing could be further from the truth. None of you guys have a website problem. You all have a marketing problem. Meaning if I was the genie, I came out of the bottle and I said, Bill, I will move your entire website website right now for free to wherever you want. I don't care who it is. Guess what happens? I do that, nothing changes because no one's coming right. to the website. So if we wanna be a successful company, our storefronts, we realize that we can't just offer websites. Otherwise, we're gonna have just a bunch of customers that are not selling anything. So we need to fix the marketing problem. So what we went about doing is doing the work to fix the marketing problem and what that looks like. What does it look like? It looks like a calendar that tells you what to do 365 days a year. 
it looks like all of the DIY, DIY education uh, that you need to learn how to do these various different things. Here's how to email market. Here's how to run a live show. Here's how to run Facebook ads. Here's how to execute a sale. Here's how to do normal posting. Here's how to do stories on Instagram and all of that. Then we have to have sessions multiple times a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, with our entire customer base where you're in a Zoom call just like you are right now. And we talk about things. We teach you live. You're going through the learning in a cohort with your peers. We split the entire customer base up to $2,000 and below sold on the website. You start in that group. Then once you get over 2,000, you move to the next group. And then the a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you're in the advanced group. And that never stops. That never, ever, ever stops. Not only that, you have to have insane support. And what do I mean by insane support? You can jump on Zoom calls with support six days a week. Not only, excuse me, not only do we support our application, like you're having a problem with our software, we'll support you on Facebook, we'll support you on Instagram, we'll support you on MailChimp. So if you're pulling your hair out of your head, you know, I realize you don't have a lot of hair left to pull. Okay, I get it. But if you're pulling your hair out of your head, you know, you can you can say you can pop in and they can look at your screen and they can they can help you get dialed in. So that is what we believe that entire comprehensive system creates the best conditions for successful customers. So what do we charge on that? Our bottom plan, I think, is you essentially pay a one-time fee and then you pay a monthly fee like any website company. The, 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 the entry-level plan to get in, I believe, is $999 down and then $49 a month, I'm pretty sure, in, in, in that range. And then there's plans that go up from there because of the bells and whistles. But what the, what the larger point is is that you pay a one-time fee essentially to get into an art business university where there's no graduates because the learning will never ever stop for the rest of your life. And those are the conditions that we believe, um, you know, set you up, create the best, um, you know, set of circumstances that you will succeed. So that's how we go about it. And, you know, initially we get some people that have sticker shock, right? And it's like, well, look, look you, we have to have marketing support for you for life. If we don't have it, you're, you know, the odds of you being successful are extremely low because no one, no, one, no one ever does the right marketing and then no one ever does the marketing consistently. And then also you have to be going through you know, this journey of building this business with your peers. Otherwise you're a solo entrepreneur, right? You don't have a bunch of employees or interns or people that are helping you out. Like you're running everything. So you, know, you gotta have the support. So that's, that's how we do it. Yeah, and then of course, it's, uh, I mean that sounds fine. I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. I just need to look at the whole process, the whole uh, uh, value chain on this thing, fulfillment, all of these things. Absolutely. So then I can price. The one thing that it's I think is really critical is to have the data and have metrics and all sorts of this stuff about who your prospects, oh yeah, who you're who you're targeting. And then being able to see what sells, what doesn't. Yes. And so it's just basically taking the product out there, see what makes sense running like a business. Yeah, hundred percent. And I need data. Yep. I mean, without the data. Yes, you do. I don't want to share that with a lot of other people, like you're saying. Yeah, I mean, lose me then. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, ultimately, the 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 the, the most important thing in, in 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 all of it is what marketing to do. Okay, that actually provides an ROI and we're in a unique position to know that better than anyone else because we've got 5,800 customers and I got to look at their data so I know right. what works, right? So number one, it's understanding what the high ROI stuff to do is. Number two, doing it consistently and never stopping. Right. No one ever does that. Everyone quits. They get fired up for three months and then they quit or they get fired up for six months and then they quit and they don't ever do it consistently and it's less about how many hours you spend a week and more about how consistently can you do it. How consistently can you do it, right? So that's a that's just a huge, huge part of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So good. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And but by the way, what, what you'll want to do is request a demo. The demo is essentially like the, the test drive. You request a demo. They set up. Um, they'll find out about you. They'll take a look at your art, hear where you are in your business, see if it sounds good. And then the demo to see all the bells and whistles and understand all, everything that the software does. And all the marketing support and everything else takes like a takes about an hour to go through all of it because there's so many different moving pieces sure. and everything else. And so, at that point, if you want to sign up, fantastic. If not, then you know it's not for you. Like they'll never call you again. It's not like a pushy thing. So they'll they'll walk you through all the ins and outs, give you all the pricing, all the packages, all the bells, all the whistles, all all that. So and we'll we'll throw links and then email you links after the fact on on how you can schedule this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I'll go ahead and do that. 
Yeah. He's trying to get my ducks lined up, all my questions, and I need to see all the way through and look at the highest ROI and make sense to do spending the money on. For sure, for sure. Are you in California, but, by the way? Not anymore. I moved. I live actually on top of a mountain in Arkansas, a little town called Y Mountain, wow. and Y has three hundred people in it. Wow, that's and I got awesome. critters all over the place. Uh, I basically have. I donated all my work clothes. If I'm formal, I'm wearing underwear. Yeah, that's classic. Well, the last one, well, the last one leaving Y. Remember to turn out the light, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Will. You bet. Talk to you guys. I saw the California license plate in the back, so I'm like, oh, he's from California. Um, yeah, you, you're muted now, so hold on. Um, so Patty was asking about the pricing. I'm just gonna, un or Penny, I'm just gonna unmute you, Penny, because these are good. There's gonna be some follow-up questions on this one. Um, all right, Penny, you'll need to hit your mic. It's in the bottom left-hand corner. I'll let you know when you get it. Yep, gotcha. Okay. 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 So my biggest question mm -hmm. is, I understand your marketing plan, and and that is that that sounds like it's an absolutely perfect marketing plan. Mm -hmm. But my my question is is also about pricing itself for your pieces. Mm -hmm. Is 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 there anybody on the team that can give some guidance as to pricing per sizes, per sets, mm -hmm. per you know, just so that we know that we're doing following the hierarchy that you're saying in the business uh, in the business. Uh, leadership thing there mm -hmm. but also being able to price appropriately where we're not having people say oh you're underpricing cheap or mm -hmm. you're overpricing mm -hmm. way beyond my means yep this one's really really easy um and people get super hung up on it but it's it, it's incredibly okay. easy anytime in business um especially as it applies to pricing you want to ask yourself is what how i'm going to price this a reversible decision Meaning if you decide to price it for $1,000, can you change your mind 24 hours later and turn it down to 500? If so, then don't belabor it, set the price, okay? You can, you can raise prices or lower prices at any point in time. Now we have, in terms of oh. the markups, we have a recommended markup percentage uh, that we use as sort of like a blanket statement of 250%. But more generally, like assuming you're an artist and you're doing originals and you're doing commissions, like right. you, you can change your prices at any point in time. OK. And, you know, sometimes sometimes the results that happen as a result of going up or down are counterintuitive. It's different for every single solitary person. So, again, we rely on this premise that if it's a reversible decision, you can you, you can go back to whatever it was at any point in time. So you can start with okay. high prices. See what happens. Did you are, are, are you getting people that are actually asking buying questions? Are you getting people that are saying, hey, Penny, I you know, I like this piece, but not at not at twenty five hundred bucks. Would you take two thousand? Okay, well then you, maybe you're a little bit higher, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're right where you need to be. If it's crickets, sometimes we lower our prices. Sometimes we increase them massively just to see what will happen, and everything in between. So, I get it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, do not spend one minute being hung up on that, Penny. The, the okay, the, I won't. Yeah, the, Thank you. Yeah, the key is is that it's a reversible decision. Come up with a price, throw darts at a dartboard if you want to. It honestly does not matter. Okay. And then you get marketing and you find out, okay, by actually marketing, by getting real feedback, if the price is right, you know, if it's, you know, it's like, um, you know, Goldilocks and the mattresses. Is that what it is? Goldilocks and the mattresses. This one's t too soft, too strong, <laughs> whatever. It's that, right? Uh, okay. Until you get it right. Okay. Not to hang up on that issue. Itself do not. There. Do okay. not. How long, okay. how long would you say you've been hung up on that issue, Penny? Oh my lord! I think the entire time frame I started looking at realizing I can create quite a business out of this, mm -hmm. especially now that people are online so aggressive. Yes, yes. Yeah. So stop. Yeah, that's stop. that's been one of my pet peeves. I don't know why I keep going over and over on this issue when really my mind should be on the marketing and more so than anything at all. A hundred percent. But this is one of these things I hear all the time, right? Like. All the time I hear this, all the time I hear this. And you know, you, 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 this is the case in point of why the marketing and the, just the business education is so important. Like you need someone to tell you that this is not a thing. This is not a thing to even contemplate for two seconds. Get going on the marketing. Don't worry about anything else. And the marketing is what ends up answering all of these questions for you. And, oh. and then, and then you're good to go. Like you found out, right? And you know, don't, 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 don't let it slow you down. You gotta, you gotta start marketing. You gotta start marketing consistently. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right, hold on. Yeah, I'll grab you next, Amy. 
I'm really bummed. Normally I have like, you know, this little zoom window and we get to see your face and something is just going wonky with my zoom today, which is really annoying me because I had to update it. But apologies. You're gonna have to just stare at my ugly face this entire time. Okay, go, Amy. Hi, I have a question um, about the marketing. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty savvy with, I have a, another small business that I've been kind of surviving on on Etsy that's um, mm -hmm. sort of art, not really art, my art art. Okay. Anyway, long story short, you know, we know my, my boyfriend is also an artist and we know mm -hmm. that every week that we spend time doing the Facebook stuff and the, and the, all the social media platforms, mm -hmm. we get, more, we get more sales. I mean, it's just, it's undeniable, but mm -hmm. the problem is we're so random about it. I and know. for me, especially it's so time consuming. And I just, I'd like to know that it's, and it sounds like what you provide yeah. is a great scheduled basis of how to do this. Does it, is it, you know, do you, in your scheduling, can you just talk a little bit more about that? Like, is it, do, is it going to stream? Yes, like yes, that? yes, yes. A hundred, a hundred percent. I know you're at it. I know exactly where you're at. So, you know, every, every, every person on, on this call that would potentially sign up or anyone that wants to have a successful business needs to understand a few things. And I want to, I want to go through this cause it'll, it'll help alleviate your concerns about timing. This business is 100% about regular marketing, sale, regular marketing, sale regular marketing sale, regular marketing sale, boom, just like a typewriter head, the year finished, we're right back at it, regular marketing sale, regular marketing sale. That is the nature of an art business. Within there, there's a whole bunch of things that you need to learn and you need to get good at. One, you have to be capturing emails. Two, you have to be emailing the emails. Three, you have to be posting on the socials and understand how omni-channel marketing works. Four, you need to be running sales and understanding the mechanics of a sale, how to announce it, how to extend it, what the discounts look like, all of that collectively are, are essentially your marketing muscles, okay? And you start with whatever acumen, whatever muscle mass you have, and then we teach you to get it to the point where you have all of that in place and it's going correctly. Because year after year, the business never changed. Regular marketing, sale. Regular marketing, sale. And to any of those that say like, sales? Sales cheating my work. I've been told never to do that. Uh, the only brands that I know that don't discount are Louis Vuitton and Tiffany's. Everyone else does, number one. Number two, the more expensive the piece, okay? You know, the, the pieces that are going truly to high net worth individuals, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 100 plus, do you have any idea the level of negotiation that goes on in those things? Oh my God, don't even get me started. High net worth individuals did not get there by paying retail, right? Unless the ones that are in the inheritance business. So though that stuff fundamentally is, is something that you need to learn. I understand you don't want to learn it. I understand you don't want to do it. I understand that you just want to create your art and then I'll have to market and sell it. But if there's something that you really don't want to do, it's probably the highest leverage thing you could be doing in your business because that's just the way the world works. So you start out with a calendar that's split, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. The first year, Amy, sucks. It sucks. You have to learn a whole bunch of stuff you don't want to learn. Okay, you're gonna be pulling your hair out of your head. You're gonna be struggling. You're like, this is super annoying. I don't know what to do about this, that, and the other. But it gets easier and you get better. And what ends up happening from the time commitment, I don't care how many hours a week you give me early on. All I care is that it's consistent. You only have two hours a week? Give me two hours a week, 52 weeks a year. What ends up happening is because our stuff works, because you get better at it, because you're going through this with a group of your peers and you're seeing them doing the marketing, somewhere, usually around three fourths of a year, you start getting some wins. And all of a sudden, I don't even have to say anything about hours because the wins are so inspiring or so that you're filling up your emotional reserves, a gas tank. All of a sudden I'm like, whoa, now I'm getting five hours a week on marketing. I was only getting two before, that's interesting. It happens that way every single solitary time, every single solitary time. It's just about getting the wins and getting the momentum. And then you're gonna be like, okay, I'm totally doing this. I'm totally doing this. So also, I just wanted to ask, it seems like your team probably, um, based on what you said about, uh, you know, you know, that Facebook is going to be doing these, these type of products where you're watching mm -hmm. a video about it. Every, 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 everyone is, everyone is, every single solitary e-commerce merchant in the world is trying to figure this right. out all at once right now. But my question is based on you saying that, it mm -hmm. sounds to me, and I'm hoping that like you guys do, because the other exhausting part is the research of constantly keeping up with yeah you don't have to do any of that you don't have to you don't have to, yeah you don't have to do any of that i mean stated another way the goalposts are just moving not exactly. sometimes overnight right like 
you know, yesterday I used to be able to have your face right over my shoulder in this lovely little window. Gone now. Gone. Now I got to go figure this out after the fact, right? So that's that, that's what we do. And we're constantly learning what the new this, that, and the other and everything is and then teaching you. But it, you know, do you know what it is? It's even bigger than that. It is valuable is what we teach you. I'm not kidding. Perhaps more valuable is the stuff we can get you to ignore because we know it's a shiny object because we know it's complete bullshit, pardon my French, that you do not even need to waste two seconds on it. Don't even look at it, okay? It's a waste of time. It is complete stupidity, shiny object syndrome. That part is awesome. Oh, so, so important, so important. And look, you know, all of us have shiny object syndrome. We're getting bombarded with too much stuff way too much stuff right like how do you know oh this sounds super interesting I, like you just you have to be a nerd against it and you have to be running off the of data and we have that so you're all good you're all good good do you do you and the boyfriend have separate websites and separate operations and separate everything no <laughs> we don't uh, we, it's a long story and yeah. i don't want to waste time yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were hoping to do a site together just to make it more cost effective i don't know if we'll do that or not mm -hmm. um you know, we have obviously we have different styles, but we both paint and we both do um, different kinds of art. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, you know. But either way, we're gonna do we're gonna do one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and we were going to open a gallery. I had bought a property here where I live, and we were gonna we, we were gonna open a gallery because the property is right in town. Mm -hmm. And we literally were almost ready to open, and then COVID hit. Yeah. <laughs> and so. The place was actually a house. It's like one of the, re it's in a historic house right in the center of town. It's the only house left. So we ended up turning it into an Airbnb. Nice. Which saved us <laughs> this past year. It was been our, basically like our only income. Um, and then this little Etsy business that we have. But we really just both want to get out of this stupid little Etsy business that we're, you know, it's great because it's making some money, but, you know, $500 a week. Uh, no, it just no, doesn't. No, it. And not enough. Both, and, and. I'm at the age where I'm like, you know what? This Airbnb was kind of a godsend, and maybe now is the time to just do my art and and put it out there. Yes, so yes, but not on Etsy because you're not retaining the customer information, yeah, and you can't I market. Don't want to do Etsy. I, know. I love Etsy, but I hate it at the same time. It's mm -hmm. definitely a great platform for the little Chotsky things that we're doing and the, and all of that. It's a great platform for that. It is not a platform in my opinion for fine art. It, it's just not, I know I, I have several artist friends that sell on there and they do okay, but you know, it's not the direction I think that real fine art should go. Yeah. That, that's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he has so many rules and restrictions and, and problems that it's just, it's maddening. Yeah. I can do a whole blog on Etsy. No, everybody, everybody. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I mean, again, I'm I'm contrarian about these things. If you have a revenue source that's working for your business, by all means, keep it going because we want to keep the revenue source going on. But I, 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 I cannot be more clear on the power of a collector list when you have it. And literally, it's the, it, it is it is the difference between a successful business and not. And especially like COVID hit, everyone's revenue sources were gone. If they didn't keep a collector list and they weren't marketing, stuck in the water, dead. No revenue, zero gone. And guess what? This was at a time when everyone all of a sudden is not going to the office and is working from home. And as a result, art photography on walls, which falls into home decor, became yep. one of the biggest sales booms of all time. So you had one of the biggest sales booms of all time. And then the places where you could buy art almost disappeared. No fairs, no shows, no galleries, all closed. So record demand and half the venues to buy it are gone. Guess who capitalized in that situation, right? Yeah. We had some that had the best years of their entire life because they kept a collector list. And you look at that, and there's only so many times that you need to see that happen. And then releasing a new series, like, you know, I go back to that thing that I showed Meg, like 46% of that thing bought. That's her base salary. She didn't need to do anything, right? That was 6,000 bucks, you know, at, uh, of that show automatically to the bottom line without even having to do anything. And that's yeah. just what it is. That's what it is, and it'll just keep going because, you know, you, 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 you guys are these individual talents and these individual brands, and people will get bonded to you, and they'll stay with you for life, and that's just how it works. It's, it's one of the great things about being an artist or photographer. Pain in the ass is building that list. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we, so we could definitely help you. You definitely have to think through the – the boyfriend thing right because we don't want a divorce god forbid and then who owns the website so just do some uh, do but I, I i do like you guys sharing 
the site because you share the attention, it shares the burden, and you sort of have a partner in the marketing, which is great. Yeah, and we do everything together now, and he's so good. We, we both play off each other. Like, he's really good at the whole marketing part and the whole, mm -hmm. he likes to sit on the computer and, and do all that stuff. And, and even though I'm very techy, I don't want to do it. It's just, to me, it's a waste, it's just not a waste of time, but it's time consuming and it drives me crazy. And so I think if we had a joint website, I actually think it would be really good because he would be very motivated to, to market everything and, and yes. continue to create. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super, I, I have to be honest. I mean, like I never click on Facebook ads, never. And yeah. I clicked on this one. Gotcha. And then, and then I spoke with Jeff mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he told me about this, this meeting and I said, all right, you know, so I said something to Hans, he's busy. He, he watched the very first part of it with me mm -hmm. um, and then and then i uh, but over the last two days waiting for this to happen i was kind of like well you know this is probably just another thing i'm going to sink a bunch of money into <laughs> it's just going to be another thing that doesn't yeah. work and yeah. i'm going to be out of that money that I mean, this is you know because let's face it i mean i'm 54 and i've i've been in business my whole life mm -hmm. so i've spent a lot of money in a lot of different things some things work and some things don't and 100%. you know when you get burned, it just it hurts. Yes. And so, but but after listening to this, uh, I'm pretty excited. About yeah. The only the, the only the only way you would get burned the only way you get burned and literally like we have insanely good retention. Meaning we have very very few people that cancel. The majority of the people that cancel, the one thing that they all share in common is they don't do the work. That's good to know too. You have to you have to do the work, right? Like we we have the best set of circumstances that I've ever seen for artists and photographers. It's not even close. There's nothing, there's nothing else out there that's even close, which is, it, it, again, which is not a sales pitch or hy hyperbole because no one else is working this hard on trying to solve the problem. No one else right. has been working this hard for this long. And I think in terms of artists and photographers that have a website that are actually selling things, we're the, we're the biggest one aside from, you know, uh, Fine Art America. But Fine Art America is a different situation because they're just SEO experts and they've got every artist name SEO. So independent of that, right. uh, genuinely, the, the getting burned, not getting burned is 100% in your hands based on are you going to do the work? Are you going to do the work consistently? And really, are you going to do the work for three to five years? Because you know what? At year five, that's when a business really starts kicking butt, right? And you've got a business and you've been in business for a long time, but you probably haven't been keeping the collector list. You haven't been marketing to it, right? You're your you're, you're boyfriend either. So you guys, there's you, you can't just, it's not a light switch. You're not going to just flip it on, right? Yeah. Your, year one is going to suck. It always sucks. Your one sucks in any business. It's not unique to yours. Like the first year sucks. It just does. You have to learn a bunch of stuff. But what's good is if you take all of that seriously, you know, you're just just going through the pyramid and understanding the business model puts you in like the 5% range of artists. You're in the top 5% because you at least understand that and you know you're going to work at it consistently and do all of those things. And that's that's you're on the path, right? And you're 54, you know, you could be on one of these calls 20 years from now and nothing's changed. Exactly. Nothing's changed, right? You yeah. have the time, you know? You have the time between now and then to like actually build something sustainable. And you know, you look, you look at, um, you know, you, you, you look at your Etsy business and how long you've had that going on. Like, if you were to retain the customer information on that, the $500 a month, I mean, I'm sure there's some sales volume in there. You'd, you'd, you'd probably already be at like a 60 or $70,000 a year business already, probably. where you control 100% of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, just to cont just one more thing yeah, you mentioned please. Fine Art America. I find and and I would love anybody else's opinion on this. Mm -hmm. I haven't spent a ton of time on it, but of course I've, it pops up once in a while when mm -hmm. I'm searching things and I look at it. it. Seems like everything on Fine Art America is China prices, like dirt cheap yeah. art, and it's, yeah. it's and it's mass amounts. So yeah. that doesn't appeal to me at all. I mean that just seems like mass produced. Yeah, I mean it's it's horses for it's horses for courses, right? There's a whole bunch of different segments of the market, and you know they reproduce things on very inexpensive media types um, because they're catering to a certain price point. And you know, digital businesses and e-commerce businesses in general, the the whole history of them is littered with right place, right time, own a particular traffic source, and do well. Fine Art America got into this very early. They owned SEO, so organic search traffic. And that's their niche. That's what they have. But they don't have a lot of repeat buyers, and you know you don't have a lot of artists that are on there and making a whole ton of money. Uh, you don't have you know your 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 algorithmic based. You know you might be winning one day and completely gone the next. And there's a whole lot of competition. You know every single solitary artist, okay, in photography, they don't want to do the marketing. 
All they want is some place to go and upload their images where they don't have to do anything. If everybody's right. doing something, it's not going to work. Right. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work for most people. And you don't retain the customer data, which is, you know, aforementioned disaster. So yeah, that, that, that right there is, is you're, you're spot on with that whole part of retaining. I, I tried to transfer my Etsy business in a transition into a website. Yeah. And we couldn't even get the Etsy. Like we were offering discounts to the Etsy people, like sending out cards with their order that, you know, Hey, if you buy it from our website, we'll give you 20% off. Mm -hmm. They will not leave Etsy. It's crazy, like, yeah. but we can't get, you know, we, you're not really supposed to mine the information from no. Etsy. You're not. No, to, they'll it, kick you off if they find out you're doing it. it. Because there's no way to just, you know, do it uh, quickly or easily. So, yeah, That's that, right. uh, this whole collector thing, you're, I'm, yeah, you're right. And yeah. I'm psyched about it. It's, 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 it's absolutely the way to go. Yeah. I mean, that's what art dealers do. They have a collector list and they... That's the whole value. That's everything that they provide, right? And that's why they will never give it to the artist. Ever, yeah. ever. You don't need them once you have it. That's that's the larger part of it, right? Um, cool. But you're on the path already. I mean, you already stand the rules now. Or you understand yeah. the rules now. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Like, like everything else, right? Um, right? Never easy. Okay. Thank you, Amy, for your questions. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, Jose, you're up next. I'll let you know when you get the, the mic, Jose. Bottom left-hand corner. It's down there somewhere. It's on like the, just mouse onto the zoom window, Jose, and it's literally like left hand corner it's like a little microphone icon and all you gotta do is click it and that'll that'll generally unmute you there there you go we got you hi patrick hey you hear me now? yeah i got you yeah thank you very much number one for your um um your very good piece of work of um uh, understanding the marketing of photography and hello to everybody that's here in the in this community mm -hmm. um um, I would say I'm in the pre pre launching of of my web page. I I've been uh, doing it for two years, mm -hmm. and I just don't decide to uh, pre launch. Um, you know the the web page, and then you you just now mentioned something amazing that it's uh, going on live and showing yourself. You know mm -hmm. I I think that's that's amazing. So my. Yeah. My big question, my small question, or however you want to take it, mm -hmm. or in everybody, is how you gather, uh, how you gather, uh, like, like, uh, let's say ten thousand people mm -hmm. in any of your uh, media that you manage, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, you know, uh, at a certain point that I'm showing off my 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 work mm -hmm. you know that that's the, the that's the the main point the other thing that i will add it was one thing that was mentioned here is what's the price of my my work over the years you know how, how much how I, I price it out mm -hmm. for other people that's the my second question mm -hmm. and the third one of course you already uh, answered it it's uh, we have to go through a training with you guys so to kind of um, make, make it more surgical precise that way you know we we we're gonna go to the right people at the right time at the right uh, uh, I would say at the right place in in the, in the space you know mm -hmm. in, in, internet so basically you know i i got it precisely it's the apex of of uh success is is just doing it on the way you're 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 selling right now the information on marketing you know it's i think that's the way to go now the last one and i would say it's the most important one for everybody here is that we're showing, let's say, let's say the print, but we're not showing the end part of the print. I mean, what I've gone through, uh, it, it's going to be aluminum uh, with high contrast. It's going to be acrylic, mm -hmm. uh, thick acrylic. 
Absolutely. So the outsourcing, connecting it with uh, what I'm showing, it's something that's going to add up to the to the price of the print, of course. And and you know how is America? You know how is the world? Everybody knows it here. Um, uh, you know, uh, you're going to show the photograph, and they're going to say, "Oh, um, I, I want that." Uh, it's um, such and such um, a quality of uh, print uh, uh, being printed, you know, and uh, the best quality, of course, uh, uh, for the best photograph is going to be the, the greatest image, you know. So um, those are basically my three questions. And again, thank you very much for your time and hello to everybody. Yeah, they're good questions. I mean, you're you're sort of conflating and making things a little bit simplistic i think on, on on some of the concepts but you know let's start let's start at the beginning you started out with sort of like you know how am i going to get my stuff in front of ten thousand followers you don't know that you need ten thousand followers there's people that have six figure your business is 2500 followers on instagram there's people that have 1.3 million followers on instagram uh that don't have businesses as big as the people that have five thousand on instagram so it's it's a it's sort of the mixed bag you don't stress about any of that stuff early on you get going on your marketing you do it consistently your audience grows in various different venues. Some audiences might work better than the others for you. And it's less about any one audience or any one thing and just doing the marketing consistently, running the shows consistently, right? Constantly getting better at them. You know, it's when, when anyone does their first live show, they, they, they usually are like, oh my gosh, I was so nervous. I was so terrified. This happened, that happened. It was totally crazy. But you know what? I made it through it and it was fun. And I always have the same response. Wonderful. Now go do a thousand of them. Now go do a thousand of them because it's that big. The it's the future. It's absolutely the future. You know, if if we take it out of the world of art and we put it into the world of fishing, it comes down to how long you're on the water and how long you have lines in the water, right? Like everyone thinks, like, oh, I'm going to go have my one live art show. That's fantastic. That's taking the fishing boat out fishing for one hour and then coming home. No, no, you need to be fishing eight hours a day, every day, seven days a week, right? Like that's who's going to catch the most fish. So it's less about any following here, any following there, it's less about uh, 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 pricing or understanding pricing. I mean, you, it, it's even less about size, Jose. It's like, look. You can show off wood. It can be small. It's ready to hang. You can zoom in on it. Talk about it. You can show off acrylic. Talk about acrylic. It's thick. It's ready to hang. Zoom in on it. I have a green screen, so it looks a little weird. You can show metal. Right? I'm sorry, my camera is just I'm a little wonky. Like there's a metal print, right? Talk about the photograph. You can show canvas. All you really have to do sometimes is just get samples and explain that all of those things are ready to go. And you can show it off that quickly and that easily, right? So, you know, we have all the various different media types. There's a whole bunch of different examples. Like the, 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 the printing aspect of it is really, really easy thing to solve. And then what, what was your third question? There was a third one mixed in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, and, and and you know the 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 question of what what media and internet to to be the most powerful one right now to to go on live. You know, you we're doing uh, Zoom. Uh, we do Zoom in a uh, professional way. It's excellent, but uh, then Instagram became for many years like. Uh, the focal point of uh, photographers. Mm -hmm. Facebook is uh, so uh, you know it, it. It makes us you know become kind of diverse and and sometimes it's difficult because you you are adjusted to one type of uh, platform or to the other one. But uh, what is uh, your suggestion? Just as a matter of. Um, uh, crude information what is your platform of choice yeah it's 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 a that's an interesting way and i and i i understand where you're going with the question and the 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 premise the premise on your question is flawed and the premise of your question which is underpinning it is there's one best platform for everybody and that there's some sort of formula that scales truly for everyone some people do incredibly well on Instagram. Some people don't do well at all. Some people do incredibly well on Facebook. Some people don't do well at all. Some people do really well on YouTube, but not great on Instagram and Facebook. It's different for every artist. Every artist has a different path. Uh, I like being on all of them. I like being on all of them to the extent that 
I can easily market on them and I, and I know how that works. I think Facebook and Instagram have an ads ecosystem. So personally, I believe that they have more attention right now than anyone else. That changes, we'll immediately move to the next one that changes. But I would say Facebook and Instagram. Thank you very much, Patrick. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they were good questions. They were good questions. And on the media types, you should have them all. You should have them all because, to be honest with you, you know, different di people like different things. Some people like canvas. Some people like metal. Some people like acrylic. Um, you know, you just need to have all of them and be able to show all of them and be able to get on a Zoom call and explain to me the finicky nuances between each and why you like them, right? Um, so that's what I would say. Okay. Thanks, Juan. I got him. Greg, you're up next. Go ahead. Gotcha. Can you? Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So, like, what if you're someone, you know, like I've got a couple of exhibitions coming up, mm -hmm. a couple of university lectures coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, hell COVID hit and I didn't know what to do. I'm, I'm a sabbatical replacement at a tiny university in Texas right mm -hmm. now. So if, if you're someone, that, if you have exhibitions mm -hmm. and projects like this coming up, like what would art storefronts, you know, what, what would, what would your response be to that? Like what, how would art storefronts handle this stuff? If you've got an exhibition coming up at a gallery or a project that you're doing with someone, mm -hmm. is this something that art storefronts like, promotes yeah we don't necessarily promote but we would teach you how to get the most out of the exhibition and like what marketing okay. things to run right. and, and and how the digital piece would fit in with the with the online with the offline pieces right um we love offline opportunities we have a ton of different playbooks whether it's the show in their circuit whether it's a gallery show whether it's a whatever it is right like um you know a co-op gallery situation and art there whatever any of it um there's there's ways that you can approach it to get the maximum roi out of it to capture as many leads as possible such that you have people to market to going going forward so that's a that's a massive part of what we teach without question it always has been okay because that's my you know I've, I've got a couple of things coming up but mm -hmm. i i want to capitalize on them so. yes absolutely you want to drive as many butts and seats as you can but most importantly you want to capture as many leads out of those situations as you can whether they're collectors or not once they're on your email list then you're marketing to them in perpetuity and 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 that's how you go so we love we love the offline events they're just haven't been a whole lot of them recently yep. for, for, for obvious reasons Not for a while yeah. yeah yeah but they're coming back all right thanks okay yeah but we could we could definitely help you i don't know about the university what you're what you're going to do there because i mean it's a bunch of college kids but you know they oh like well and it's you know it's all zoom i mean i, I, I feel like i'm in class right now because this is yeah trust me I we're to... going back live i believe in the fall so yeah we'll, we'll see yeah, I'm sort of in your world, right? Because I have to run four of these things a week usually. So I, I get I get the online teaching. I'm, I'm ready to go back to in-person myself. It's, it's uh, I feel for the, especially the kids who are freshmen, you know, it's like, know. oh my God, what a, I, I don't know what to say about your first year of college experience. You know, you know. call the classes online. Yeah. That's got to be weird. So, yeah. all right, well, but thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hey, Patrick. Hey. Okay, I have one question and that's it. Okay. Um, okay, when you have, um, you said you have three different schedules. Yes. Um, let's assume that I have unlimited time and I can devote my entire focus on just creating art and selling art and nothing else, because mm -hmm. that's the truth. So, um, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, is it a matter of we start at the beginning schedule and we master that and we go to the next or yeah. can we do yep. everything full on all the time, everything? It's, it's a bike and then a bike with training wheels. And then you take the training wheels off and you're on the regular two wheel bike and then you get a little bit faster bike. So yeah, you can, you know, it, you, you don't put the cart in front of the horse. You have to go step by step, but you take on everything that you can yeah. and then you get better at it and get better at it and get better at it. And again, it's just you're in you're out that's what it is channel my enthusiasm into the basics correct yeah. yes yeah and then and then you'll just okay. get better and better with time okay i'm done wonderful thank you Rio. Uh -huh. yeah what did i do i got something going on all right um yeah anybody else questions guys really really bummed about the fact that I, my little my little zoom thing was not working i'm gonna have to do some serious hackery when i get off of this call and figure it out because they moved the goalpost again 
Um, okay, Amy, you got another one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Amy. Uh, you're not. You're you're still muted, so you have to unmute. Yeah. Anyway, um, I typed out the question so you don't have to answer it twice. But um, uh, are we able to get low cost samples mm -hmm. of the, the prints yeah. and things that yeah, we yeah. offer? Oh yeah. Service? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Um, I figured all day long. So we partner with two printers. One's on. I mean, assuming you're U.S. based, we have one for Canadians in Canada because of the import export and all that. But we use. Bay Photo on the West Coast, and we use another one called Graphic Dimensions on the East Coast. They have every printer, every color calibrated screen, every monitor, every ink type, every everything, right? Um, so whether you want to use the highest end canvas or the, you know, the entry level Chinese stuff or anything in between, we obviously make our recommendations the ones that we like. But yeah, you can do any and all of it, and we regularly beat them up because we have some pretty good buying power with our customer base to do sales. So. There's always great times when you can order stuff on the cheap. And, you know, if you walked in off the street to either of those places, uh, we get significantly better pricing. So you're not just like a consumer. Actually, I have a second question yeah. then. Um, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. I'll think of it and okay. I'll chime back. In. But it was something to do with that printing. Um, oh, phooey. Samples, media types. Samples, yeah, it was, it was something else. I'll, I'll think of it. Yeah. I hate when this happens. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It, it happens to all of us. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm really bummed about my Zoom thing not working, but it's just how it goes. I'm going to have to go fix that later. Yeah, but thank you guys for, for attending today. Really appreciate it. And I would say, like, look, if you just found out about us, don't worry about it. We're not going anywhere. We're going to be around, right? But if you are in the situation where you're like, this is interesting and I do want to understand more, request the demo, go through the test drive, zero pressure, zero sales pitch. And if you're cool after that, just be like, thanks. I learned all I, I, I wanted to, I'm out. Or, you know, if you, if you like it, then fine, you, you sign up. But it's, it, it's the best way to test drive everything else and learn all the stuff that I didn't show you because, you know, there's just too many features and bells and whistles and everything else. Um, go ahead, Jose. Uh, yeah, well, um, um, uh, uh, I just uh, uh, um, found out that uh, you guys send samples like uh, uh, from each of the the things that uh, your company produce uh, with yep. an outsourcing, and so that way we will kind of quote unquote practice. Uh, uh, the way of selling, the way that I personally think it's uh, it's amazing, or uh, it that will take time, or we have to get into the contract with you guys, and then. Uh, no, I mean you could. You, we have a site that you can go and upload your work to right now and order samples in two seconds if you're so inclined, if you if you want to. Um, okay. Or you know, or when you come on board, obviously, like you can you can get an order in on on discounts. But look. You need a canvas, you need a metal, you need an acrylic, okay? And I have a green screen, so it makes these things look a little weird. Wood is actually kind of popular. You'd be surprised. It sells pretty well. Um, it's beautiful, too, in terms of the texture, especially for photography. And then you need a frame dark print of some kind, right? You can use a textured watercolor paper. You can use just a regular uh, cotton rag paper. Once you have those, you have the majority of the media types sorted and you have stuff that you can show off and you can explain to your customers on a Zoom call or anywhere else the subtle differences between one or the other. Um, so yeah, and hold on. Let's see if I can get this guy on here right now. So yeah, you're, 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 you're overthinking. I mean, that entire stack that I just, you know, um, you know went, went through right there is like 110 bucks. And you've got all of them and you can upload your images. So you're already showing some of your best sellers, right? And you're talking about the difference between a metal print and the difference between an acrylic print, right? Like... Probably, Patrick, I'm going to uh, sound a little bit illiterate, uh -huh. but um, does uh, photography has what um, lithography has, like it's numbered? Uh, Limited editions? Uh, there's there's open yeah, editions so there's 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 everything under the sun there's open editions there's limited editions um you know open editions will be as many as possible sometimes they're signed sometimes they're not and it's digital signature 
uh, on limited editions. They're they're usually numbered. Sometimes they're not actually numbered on the piece, um, but they are but they are numbered. You know, in in the certificate of authenticity. Some are signed by hand. Some are not. There's there's everything under the sun. There's no there's no one size fits all that you know that dictates what it needs to be. Of course, by from the marketing point of view, you would recommend that um, that's mentioned, right? That uh, that it's going to be like a, a numbered edition or just uh, just a yeah. I mean, it's view. it's it's sort of horses for courses, right? Like there's some situations where it makes sense to do limited editions, or some where it's it, it makes sense to do open editions. You know, I'm I'm someone that's more interested in making sure that the artist the photographer has a good range of price points meaning you have stuff in the you know around 500 to below 500 dollars range and then you have expensive stuff and then you have stuff in between such that there's different price points in your store such that you know someone can afford to to order no matter what situation that they're in other than that it's active marketing like all these questions the only way to really answer them is by doing active marketing and getting real feedback and getting sales no one can tell you hey. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually take advantage of a question of Please. one of the other uh, people here. Uh, and I thought it was a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, do you have in your department, in your company, somebody that sees your photograph and says, oh, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're in the good quality type of photographers. You're kind of, you know, for low expense uh, photographs mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do you have like this orientation because um, you know I, I've learned that uh, we think that we we have the greatest photographs and then when we sit down with uh, several photographers hey man you know it's just they don't even mention their photograph you know oh and that's so, the beauty uh, that's that's the beauty of this particular thing if I was in your town right now uh, Jose I would drive to your house I'd pick you up and I take you to the ATM machine. And I want you to show me on that ATM machine where there is a button for likes, where there is a button for comments, where there's a button for shares, where there's a button for I was in a juried show, where there's a button for all my family and friends tell me my work is beautiful, where there's a button that says you're ready to sell at this clip or not. All of that is not on the ATM machine, Jose, because it's all nonsense. The only thing that is, that is truth is someone pulling the cash or credit card out of the wallet and paying you for your work. No one else can tell you anything. I can't, Amy can't, Greg can't, no one on this call can tell you, only the market can tell you. And what everyone does is they contemplate all the what ifs. What about this? What about that? All of that is nonsense. The only thing that we'll tell you is doing the marketing, getting the work in front of people and does the commerce happen? If it does, you're on the right track. If it doesn't, you've got other problems. So that's the ballgame. No one can tell you. No one can tell you. Okay. Yep, and and what about the uh, variety on the presentation? Uh, uh, you advise as a marketing specialist on just focusing on, let's say, landscaping, documentary, mm -hmm. portrait, or are you kind of willing of uh, spraying like uh, 90 degree images of uh, different types and because um you know uh you don't know who's looking at you at some point you know and probably it's gonna like the bird but not the 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 uh great cannon or whatever place mm -hmm. you know or amsterdam or whatever you know it's like uh what's your recommendation be focused on one yeah you're 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 it's this is the same variation in the question you asked earlier and again it's a flawed question and it's it's no different than how many hours a week do i need to work on my marketing that's a version of it what are the best selling price points if i just know what those were what are the best selling media types if i just knew what the best selling media types all of those questions underpinning those is the premise that there's some sort of magical catch-all formula that works for everybody nothing could be further than the truth nothing could be further than the truth i have seen so much width and breadth and different things and different media types and different price points and different work and work that I think is garbage uh, sells incredibly well, work that I think is terrible, doesn't sell it, or that's amazing, doesn't sell at all. There's no formula. Everyone has a different journey in this business and that's just the nature of, of the creative process in this whole thing. So all I know is I don't know, nor will you ever know until you get going on the marketing and you get actual feedback, right? Like, you know, the, the analogy I always give is, 
you got your boat, um, you know, on the shore, right? On the shore, you know, and it's and it's on the little the, on the little rails that will push it into the water, and you're on the boat going. I wonder what the best places. I wonder what the best ways to uh, um, um, best media types to create are. Or I wonder what the best price points are. Or you know, I'm going to launch this thing as soon as I get redo the mast. Or I, I revarnish the top deck. Or I get some curtains in the galley. Like no, we got to see if the damn boat floats. Push the boat in the water and let's see if the boat floats. If the boat floats, then you can start making some course corrections. But stop arguing about the damn thing when it's on the dock, right? Like we got to get it in the water. You'll never know. You'll never, ever know. All of these questions are academic. You'll never know. Your work could sell like gangbusters. It could not sell at all. You could put 10 different styles up, and 80%, 80% of the sales come from 20% of the styles. Okay, well, that's your niche. Or it could sell equally throughout all of them. People love it. So you just you, you don't know. You'll never know. There's no one that can tell you. Anyone that tells you that they can tell you is lying. Only one that can tell you is the almighty dollar, is the transaction happening. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. All right. Very right. good. Thank you very much again, Patrick. Yeah. The good news is you don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Uh, 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 I say all you got to do is just start marketing. That's it. Okay. It's going to go Patrick, then Greg. Um, go ahead, Patrick. Yes, sir. Um, so from my understanding, it's more like a business partnership and from the point that we decide to sign up and go ahead and become a member with you guys, it's more of a, uh, like I said, a business partnership of you guys are doing the, the, the just and the brunt of the marketing and teaching. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know what is the, uh, I heard you talk about the, the, the 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 beginning upcoming costs in up front mm -hmm. and then the monthly costs but as we sell through you guys what is the the commission for you and us that that type of sale yeah so i think well f first things i'll get into the commission ones first let me let me let me do like the business partnership one first it it's less a business partner i mean we're not necessarily your partner i mean technically we are right because the the only metric that matters like I run the marketing department and I have an entire team called the GMV team. GMV is called gross merchandise value. It's the sum total of everything that's sold on our websites, right? And it's the only thing that matters. It's the most important thing because ultimately, if that thing goes up, I have happier customers that refer the business more. The, the NPS score, which is net promoter score, which is like how software measures how successful it is. Everyone's happier. I get lower tech support issues. Like it, it just, it's the cure-all. It's the panacea to the business, right? So really, you, you, I, and, and this is the best way to say it. You're essentially joining an art business university that you'll never graduate out of. And we will teach you every single solitary aspect of the business. And we continue to learn and get better and get better and get better. And like I said, like the damn thing changes so quickly. It changes so freaking quickly that y you need the constant education, right? Like even, you know, let's say you join now and your first year you sell 10,000 and your second year you sell 50,000. The year after that you sell 150,000. Your need for marketing help at the hundred and fifty thousand level is even more acute than it was at the five thousand dollar level because you want to take the hundred and fifty thousand to three hundred, and then you want to take the three hundred to six hundred, right? So it just it never ever stops. The 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 education, the marketing help, the assistance that will never ever stop, and it's just it's critically important that we have that. So that's what I would say. It's more it's more of a university with no graduates, right? Um, but within that university, it's not just marketing that we're teaching right we're teaching pricing we're teaching the nuts and bolts of the business like sometimes we have accountants on that talk about the accounting side of the business right and you know we teach you what are the best ways to do shipping and how to handle shipping what will approach you know when you're shipping originals and we've got people that teach psychology like you know we're in this cool spot now where because we have so many customers a lot of them are teachers themselves right in various different capacities or they're really really good at one aspect of it like we have one gal that's really, really good at scoring licensing deals, right? So she got licensed with the university and sold a ton of art as a result of that. And so now she teaches people how to go in and make the licensing deals. So it's not really just marketing, right? Like it is an art business university. There's all of these various different classes where you can get education on this thing, that, or thing, and other. So that's a part of it. In terms of the fees, I believe it's 10% at the highest. And then I believe it goes down lower depending on what plane you're on. 
I don't know the details. Normally what we do is we have someone from the outreach team that are on these calls and answers all these questions so I don't have to know any of this damn information. I'm not trying to be cagey. But you can set up a call with them and, and before you even do the demo or anything else, be like, all right, break down the damn plans for me. Break down the prices. I need to understand what's what. And they'll, and they'll tell you all those things. What do you do, by the way? Are you an artist? Are you an artist or photographer? Yes, sir. Artist. 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 And how have you gone about selling your work so far? Um, I actually have a, a website. Mm -hmm. I linked in with uh, Fine Art America mm -hmm. almost about a year ago, mm -hmm. but I kind of noticed the same thing that you were saying, yeah. that the, the, the quality wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. So I was promoting it kind of heavy when I first signed up, but I seen the quality from people sending back the pictures. Of course, they were happy because they liked the artwork. Mm -hmm. But seeing the quality of the art on the, you know, the, the the canvas or the print or the metal that they ordered it on, I was unsatisfied because I actually have a printer here in Houston that I use, mm -hmm. and their stuff is awesome, yeah. but it's high, so I have to be higher with my with my prices. Yep. Right. Yep. So at this point, I'm trying to transition. My my full time is a I'm a barber, but okay. I'm trying now to transition into my my base income actually being my art mm -hmm. because i have a lot of art that just sits around and it doesn't really get seen because is it hanging in the barbershop uh, huh? is it hanging in the barbershop uh i used to but it's a different demographic and it doesn't really it contrasts with 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 the two got it so um i do i do custom clothes and stuff also mm -hmm. so more of the custom clothes sell in the barbershop but my my art on canvas, my fine art stuff like that, I have to go to another another area. Got it. Right. And uh, but like I said, I, I I do so much stuff, so I it's it's hard for me to find one area and one branch and one way to market. And I think that through you guys, it'll it'll really help me because like I said, I do. I do fashion. I do. Uh, there's no I reason you can't. Type. There's no reason you can't sell all of that together on the same website. Yeah, too. I do. I yeah. do. I do. I do a lot. I do a lot of stuff, man. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I I I I really do think I, I like what you have going on, and it sounds like as we transition as artists to different stages in the process of becoming a a, a well acclaimed, a well known artist, you guys are are the right hand man. Yes. And, you you know, you're, you're, no joke, you'll be able to sell all that stuff in perpetuity, right? Because you're the brand as much as the work. Everyone thinks yeah. like, you know, you, you get pigeonholed into just being the, you know, I paint birds, so I'm the bird guy, right? Or I photograph mm -hmm. flowers, so I'm the flower guy. Like, no, you are the brand. Patrick Miles mm -hmm. is the brand just as much as anyone else is, right? Anything else that you do is. So you can sell all of that stuff direct. It's just about the consistent marketing. And like, look, do you know what I love more than multiple different revenue sources? Nothing, okay. nothing. Uh, I love multiple yeah. different revenue sources. Now, yeah, you know, are you going to be able to quit the barbershop job day one, year one? No, probably not year two, probably not year three. And the reason is, is going to be like, Patrick, don't quit the damn day job, man, because all of this extra income the art business is generating now, you can just pour right back into the business, right? Because you don't want to leave. You don't want to leave the barbershop job to struggle and be starving an artist even for a day, right? You want to, you want to be paid the minute you move over. And so, you know, it's a classic story because I've got, got this one customer in totally interesting niche, totally wacky niche. I don't want to get into it, but he, he's like going to hit like 110, 120 in his third year. And he's like, I'm thinking about quitting that job. And I'm like, dude, do not quit that damn day job. Don't you do it. This thing is starting to hum. You're putting more money back into the Facebook and Instagram ads. You're, you're starting to grow the following even more. Like, dude, you, 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 when you, when you don't have to take any money out of the business for like a five to seven year period, you actually have something that's paying you significantly when you get out right now, you know, easier said than done. You know, I don't know how long you've been a barber. Maybe you've been a barber. You're so long. You're like, dude, I'm just over this. I can't cut any more damn hair. Um, but you know, like I, I, I want you to, I want you to incubate that little baby and get it growing Patrick and get it rolling. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. and, and then and then move over, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, I, I I would never probably I was telling one of my customers he was saying that the art art thing was growing, and I would tell him I'm going to have to stop cutting on Saturdays eventually to do the exhibitions and mm -hmm. the you know the little art shows and the festivals and all that type of stuff. And he was scared because I've been cutting hair for almost 20 years now. Wow. And uh, so I, I I have a a really good clientele and I make mm -hmm. really good money. And so, I, like I said, I'll never, I'll never stop cutting. But just the, 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 
the the ability to use all of your talents, yeah. you know, and to use them fully. Yeah. And so I believe, you know, everything that God gave you the ability to do, you need to be able to find time within these seven days to get it all done. Yeah. And so, it, it, and what you guys have going, I think, is beautiful because I've been trying for about since since about 2006, and I once made it to the whole uh, the the fashion shows mm-hmm. and the the magazines and all that type of stuff, and the actually the 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 fame and the publicity actually scared me and pushed me back a little bit. And so now, uh, seeing how it actually goes and coming back around again to it, and seeing and and seeing something like this that can actually you know uh, uh, boost you and like you said the calendar that you have that helps you with the promoting and helps you with all that type of stuff. Yeah. Because game changer it's, it's, it's hard it's, it's hard. hard it's really really hard it's hard yeah for for whatever reason and you know if you don't believe in god fine but I, I believe in god so i do the god thing but like you know the way that god created the artist brain okay and then the marketing brain it's like that venn diagram there ain't a lot of crossover between those two mm-hmm. there just isn't i don't know why i i got pattern mm-hmm. recognition i've had thousands of conversations and I, it, it's just not so look it's it, it's a difficult thing but again you know you do the difficult thing and that's where all the damn arbitrage is okay it's not very difficult mm-hmm. to upload all your images to Fine Art America. Of course, that's not going to work. You know what's difficult? Doing the damn marketing consistently year in, year out. So where do you think yeah. the biggest arbitrage, the biggest pop is waiting for you, right? On the hardest thing to do, always. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. I, I, I thank you, sir. I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Love to have you on board, Patrick. But just right. look, especially being that you're at the top of your craft with, with the barber thing, like, look. I love that revenue source. I love the clothing revenue source. I love the I love the art revenue source. Let's let's keep hammering all three, right? And yeah. do you know do you know what you'll end up finding despite the fact you probably don't need to because your barber business is so established, but once you learn the digital marketing, the digital marketing all it really is is how to get attention. And the better you get at it, my guess is you're going to start putting more butts and seats in the barber shop too because you start leveraging it, right? Yeah. It's just about yeah. attention. Like we live in the attention yeah. economy, no joke. So, you know, the the point is is that you seem entrepreneurial. You seem like you have a couple of these different hustles going on. Like y- 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 learning the marketing is, is you'll never not need it. You'll never not be able to leverage it in all these various different other areas, right? So you end up getting yeah. tremendous, uh, you know, uh, just, it's just attention. It's just how to get attention. That's, that, that's all it is. And I don't know a single solitary business in today's day and age for the most part that doesn't need it, aside from the damn Kardashians who don't need any more of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it, it, like you say, it's, it's about the attention. Because when I first started, it was all about passing out business cards and, mm-hmm. and postcards and, you mm-hmm. know, interaction face to face. But now everything is online. Yep. Everything is social media. Everything is instantaneous. Yep. Everything is right now and everything is 24 hours. Yep. So, yeah. We're, is, yeah, we're, we're more nothing. distracted than we've ever been in the history of mankind. And all that does is it makes attention even more the scarce commodity, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But what's yeah. rad is you don't you don't need as much of it as you think to have a healthy business, right? Like there's this famous uh, essay by this guy named Kevin Kelly, and he says, 1,000 true fans. You need 1,000 true fans to have a six-figure year business. And, you know, there's permutations on it and iterations. But he, he's right. I see that. Like you need a smaller number of truly dedicated people. And if you get that, you've got a business. So why the heck wouldn't you go to get that? You'd go and get it, right? And you can't, mm-hmm. you're not going to have any guarantees. Your clothes might take off more than your, your art. I don't know. You don't know either. You got to get marketing, mm-hmm. right? Like, but you know, what a great position to be in, right? Like, what a great position to be in. So, yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Good talking to you. And you know, I like that first name. Um, okay, Greg, are you still here? And then, Carlos, I see your hand too. Don't worry. Uh, yep. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, so, I mean, I really liked what you said about like pricing mm-hmm. is reversible that you can. Yes. But what if, but, but what if that's not the issue? Uh, like, what if you've been showing for a while mm-hmm. and you don't set your prices? You know what I'm saying? No. What do you mean you don't uh, set your prices? Prices have been set by other like your pro yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so wh- what, what are you saying it's worth is what other fucking people will pay for it yeah well no true so, words in that that's for sure well uh, so uh, you know uh i'm i'm no longer in that position mm-hmm. to set my own price 
is there something you can do about it? Uh, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, well, okay. you know, you're, you're likely reliant on them, whoever's setting the prices for you to, de exactly. to it's, define it's your reality. Yeah. Sold. You know, that's the deal. Yeah. Like Absolutely. once, yeah. once you start marketing and you start getting new eyeballs and new attention, you're in control at that point. It's not, it's not whatever gallery that you're, you're involved or whatever, whatever, um, yeah. you know, relationship that you're locked into in that capacity. Like you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. And I see people doing it all the time. And I'm not kidding when I say this, don't laugh at me, but some people have such a phobia with raising their prices that I literally tell them, I am going to log into your website this weekend and I'm going to change all the damn prices. Do yeah, not get in my way. I'm going to do it. You will be no, fine. I like and it. I log in and I change I like them. It. I'm not kidding. I change them. I don't care. I'll change them in a heartbeat because I know I, like I can change them right back. I like this. But you understand what I'm asking. You yes. know, it's like uh, as a child artist. What are your pieces start at? What are your prices. pieces start at? What are your price points start at? Well, I, as, as a child, I set my prices. Mm -hmm. uh, when I moved, you know, when I did shit, it, it someone else set my prices you yep. know yeah someone else is going to set it's your prices again point. i am going to raise them across the board yeah. on every single solitary piece so it's it's like it doesn't feel like it's in my control anymore is that weird no uh, not at know? all not at all i don't care yeah. i will change it i will change it for you the minute you sign up i will raise them all thanks brother Done. because that's uh you know it's uh I might have set them high, but I, you know, I, I did a bunch of shit and, yeah. you know, people bought them and stuff. So, yep. but, but really, so the price has been set by what people will pay for my work. That is, you that know? is, that is life. And that's always been the way it is. hundred percent. You can raise it. You can go, to, you can go below it. I like raising the prices because you want to give yourself some, some, some flexibility to negotiate. Right. Um, you yeah. know, and, and okay, well, look, look. 15% off? Are you out of your mind? Actually, I need to get rid of it. You take it today, 15% off. But, like that kind of thing all the time. what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's still in my control. I don't think it's totally in my control because, you know, there are galleries and shit that would be like, oh my God, we can't, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not under any of these constraints. We can't sell shit or then we can't sell it for what we have. Yeah, but that's 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 that's, the, that's an exploitative relationship, full stop, right? Like, oh, uh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, yeah. that part I get. You know, yeah. that yeah. part I get. But this is where I, yeah. So, is that a thing you guys can address? Yes, it's a hundred percent a thing we will address. I will change them but, for you. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, as a as a young artist, you set your prices. Mm -hmm. As an artist who starts showing shit, you no longer set your prices. Your prices are set by the people who sell your art, you know? Yeah, to a certain extent. But like, look, if the, if the demand outseeds the supply, then the prices go through the roof. And that is something that you necessarily have control over, right? Like you're assuming that all the sales are only going to go through in the, in the gallery capacity. And that might not be the case. Yeah, by any means. Thank you. I you know, and I, I don't know. I, at this point, I mean, dude, I'm I'm an old man. I've watched I've watched the art world collapse like nine times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. None none yeah. is none as gnarly as that last one though. That was the most extraordinary thing we've any of us have ever lived through. I mean it's without I question. No, I I think there have been all so horrifying. But still. Yeah. I, but but so this is the thing that you can deal with. You yep. know, because it's I, honestly, this is not in my control. Yeah, you know? and I promise you, you're overthinking it. And look, d don't worry, okay. don't worry. Yeah. You, you, this is the kind, of, this is the kind of help you get for sure, Greg. Don't, don't, don't stress. Thanks, no, thanks. That yeah. means a lot. Yeah. Because it's really people ask me like, "What are your prices?" And I'm like, "I can't. I'm not the one who sells them." Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Can't, I can't say that. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, you're all good, Greg. All right. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, okay, Carlos, you're up next. And then I'll get your question too, Mike. Don't worry. Um, Carlos. Oh, okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. 
I'm driving, so get, let me just park for a moment. Um, first of all, thank you. I think I joined a little bit late, late, late in the conversation, so I might mm -hmm. miss a lot of important information. But yep. uh, here is my, my scenario. I'm a photographer. Okay. Um, I sold some pieces by myself. Uh, I've been doing this for around 15 years. Okay. It's been great, but um, I have a lot of responsibilities now, right now, so I switch my main income from being an artist to have like a daily job. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also an architect, but uh, I mm, I have a lot of material that I consider uh, be a shame just to let that that that, that, that those uh, that, that work just leaping on a hard drive. Um, I know. Uh, from my experience and from different experiences, uh, different points of view, different exhibitions, that there is potential for the material. Um, but I don't have the time and I don't have, um, I can't risk, of course, my main income, just, just switching yeah. blindly yeah. out of my passion that is, uh, is right there. And in addition, in addition to that, I, I'm not going to... I'm not looking for like to taking more pictures in my life <laughs> as a, as as an income in itself. Yeah, I trust my work. I I I I am an I have a lot of street photography material. Let's say that as, okay. a, as a just as an example, and um, I also notice that sometimes photography uh, in the art uh, scenario is not like. Uh, looking too much into the this type of, of photography, street photography, but I, I think there is something that I can do with you guys, with your help to put this work in the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's just my my. I started like following you just one week ago, and I've been just tend to yeah to jump in. But I, I this is a great opportunity to talk about the potential or what you guys can maybe help with uh, in my case. Yeah. 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 I understand what you're saying. I, you know, I think too, it, it, it's hard when you've got a full-time job, right? You're like, yeah, I come home dusted. Uh, there's no way I'm going to have any time to work on my marketing or anything else. You know, one of the, one of the interesting things is that our business is a standard issue. 80, 20. What do I mean by 80, 20? It's called Pareto's law, but it, it always rears its head up in weird things. And it, in, in where it rears its head in our particular business, 20% of our customers are full-time artists, 80% have a full-time job, and they want their career to eventually take it over, they want to retire on it, or, or, or some combination thereof, right? So that's totally normal. We have a full-service marketing agency that you can pay to do certain things um, that are very experienced in how art and photography is sold, so that's an option too. But ultimately, yeah, you do still have to do some work. There's no getting around that, right? Um, you know, We can make sure that the amount of time that you invest in that particular area, doing the work, learning the marketing, is spent on the highest ROI marketing techniques, tactics, and the like. Um, so that ends up being a huge help, but there is really no shortcut to doing the work. You do still have to do the work. You're like, yeah, you're, you're like, I know, yeah, but I don't want um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's say I would like to reach a point where my work um, will do will do almost like the work by itself. Yes. With the help of, of course, a third party. Yes. Um, I am not pretending to depend or to switch my income um, from my daily job just for my art. But it would be really nice mm -hmm. to have more chances of uh, exhibitions, to sell, and to publish. That is a big one for me also. Yeah. That's really important for me. Yeah. Um, so I'm just looking for visibility, um, exhibitions, and reaching out, I don't know, for new crowds and new opportunities with my work. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Like, look, you know, you, you, you're, you know, you're going to have to put some work in, right? You know, you're going to have to grind on it a little bit. Well, okay. If, 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 if that's the case, we will certainly make sure that that is not wasted time, right? Because we know what you need to be working on. And if you want your work to get there, it sounds like it was already there at one point in time. You can get back there. You just, you, 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 you got to kickstart it and do a little work to get it there. Okay. Yeah. 
We can help you. I will keep. Yeah, I'll be listening here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. There's one more question I know, and then Mike's asking. Um, okay, I see your hand too, Anthony. My, I've got one question from YouTube um, that that I'm asking, and Mike's asking specifically who the five to top ten earners are um, at Art Store Fronts. And obviously, we're not at liberty to publish anyone's uh, revenue, uh, Mike. But what I would say is, it's not who you think it is. It's not even close to who you think it is. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm that I'm blown away by more than anything else is just the nuances and the fact that nothing ever really, nothing re ever really comports like you would think it is. Like one of the things that I constantly do when I try to study customers' data is understand what they're doing. Okay, what the artist in question is doing. And you know, I'll give you a for instance. We start with everyone that's above six figures and we look at everything. We look at how many emails do they have on the email list? How many sales do they run? How many Facebook fans? How many Instagram fans? How active are they po posting on the socials? How many sales are they running a year? What are they spending on Facebook and Instagram ads? And there's just no formula. There's no takeaway that says one person is gonna be more successful than others. Some of the most successful people that we have figured out an attention source that's completely different than, than Facebook and Instagram and anything else. And, and, and they've had it and they've had it going for a long time. Some of the people that are most successful are just the ones that try new styles enough such that they find something finally that like hits 10x bigger than what they were working on before. There's, there's, there's no rhyme or reason to it, Mike. It is like a, it is such a mixed bag. And again, you know, in terms of the top five to 10 earners, there's a couple of ways that I can interpret that question. W way number one is if you somehow know what those five to, top, five to 10 top earners uh, are, that you're gonna be able to reverse engineer what they did and copy them. And that it, it doesn't work out because there's not one any formula that works. It's like a completely different mixed bag. I mean, I've got some people that follow our marketing to the letter, that follow our marketing to the letter, everything that we're telling them to do, and they're doing great. And then I've got some that don't follow any of it, not any of it, and they're destroying it because for whatever reason, they figured out something early and then anything in between. Like I said earlier, like we've got people with over a million Instagram followers. And then there are people that are that are, that, that, that have five thousand that are selling more than they are. How do you how do you how do you reconcile that? Right? How do you make sense of that? You know, some people are in niches that where the people are just diehard, and some people are not. So it's it's a huge mixed bag, Mike. Um, I, you can make some suppositions on who are the ones that are selling the most, but you would never guess in a million years who the ones are. But I obviously, you know, I'm not at liberty to publish revenue. Shopify doesn't publish revenue yeah. figures on who the top five, 10 earners are. And what does earners even mean? Is it, is it you know, the, the, the takeaway at the end of the day? Or is it just the sales, uh, you know, gross sales? Um, so it's, that's, that's a tough question. But Mike, when you come on one of these sessions, you can ask me directly and then we can get it to there. Um, okay, Anthony, you're up next. You'll need to unmute, you'll need to unmute Anthony. I'll let you know when you get it. Bottom left-hand corner. Gotcha. How you doing today? Good. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm sorry I'm late. I had some family things to take care no, of. No, all good. All good. No worries. So first thing is um, I have been trying to get somebody to call me mm -hmm. to talk to me about uh, the uh, services of your websites. And mm -hmm. Haven't been lucky enough to get anybody to call me back. Okay. I get the, dem I get the demo thing and then uh, I'll get an email, but nobody set up an appointment okay so well can, we'll we'll look into that for you it's usually it's like okay. a phone number glitch to be honest with you okay appreciate that yeah well so like i said i'm i'm pretty much more interested in the uh, website services that you offer because from what you've been saying in the other uh zoom meetings it's mm -hmm. uh, not a regular website it's something that's very unique for photography and uh and uh, fine art. Mm -hmm. And when I drive my traffic to my website, I want it to be right. I don't want it to be. I mean, I've built websites before. I'm a copywriter mm -hmm. in my profession. Okay. And uh, I can pretty much do my own marketing and I've got a lot, a lot of traffic that I can uh, draw to my website. Okay. But I, I want it to be right. So if you could have somebody call me and talk to me about that a little bit, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Uh, also, what else was it? With the art. Now, does everything on my site have to be something that I created, 
or is it uh, tell me about the art how to no it's they're they're highly templated like you know there's a couple of different styles to choose from but really all you're doing is uploading the art uploading the logo writing the about me section and setting the prices then get going on marketing that's it sounds good yeah all right, if you can uh, get somebody to give me a call, I appreciate it, sir. For sure. I'll have somebody reach back out. Um, thank you, Anthony. All right. Uh, these key lights are starting to melt my brain, so I think we're going to leave it there. Guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for sticking in. Um, great questions today. Really enjoyed the session. Uh, like I said, I'm going to send you links with anything that you might have missed uh, that'll, that'll, that'll um, you know, any of the videos or any of the articles or that report or any of the rest of the stuff, so that'll all be in there. And on that note, guys, have a, have a great rest of your week.